every one of you travel from somewhere to to Boston. I thank you for that. And so, Stacy, you're yeah, based Philadelphia. in Phil Philadelphia, uh -huh. yeah. Yes. And Mary, uh, New York. Michael, New York. And uh, Lovell, New York. So, yeah, you you all traveled here. So. We actually carpooled. So we should do this annually. How about that? In a bus, you know, you rent a bus. Right, and then a, tr a truck or something, and then yeah, annual annual trip, yeah. And every year you'd make something different, right? <laughs> yes, yes, it will be, you know, restitch or stitch, <laughs> or oh, stitch a one point, two point oh, yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I wanted to hear anybody's <laughs> comment on other people's work here. Uh, oh, perfect. That you might have noticed and said, oh, I like that. Perfect question. Oh, am I the first girl always? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, does anyone else have any? I do. Okay, okay, thank you, Mary. Yeah. Um, I love Sam Gilliam. And so I was curious about... Um, I don't, do people know Sam Gilliam? Oh my God, he recently passed away yeah, yeah, yeah. and his work is, like talk about using canvas, yeah, oh my God. Um, they, oh, you know, I think they took it out of Dia Beacon. Did they? I think we just, just recently. recently. Yeah, I think it just so. ended. But, um, you know, just Google him, as everyone does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, just fantastic work and, so I was just curious about what what was going on with that piece. Did you like paint? Totally. Did you paint? Yeah. Oh wow! No, I can. I, I, no, <laughs> no, 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 absolutely not. I can explain it. I, yeah. I was saying, yeah. Sorry, um, sorry for the confusion. <laughs> so the I have one rule. Like I'm like pretty much like I'd want to do everything in art except one thing, and that is paint. And uh, <laughs> it's just because I feel like I mean I just feel like everybody's paint. And I was like, you could do pretty much everything you want to in painting some other way, as it's been proven in this beautiful show. And funny with that piece specifically, so I really struggle with making things about basketball because I played basketball mm -hmm. through college and um, I had made works on jerseys before, but pretty much they were just like uh, quilted jerseys and I was like, ah, oh, it's kind mm -hmm. of just a quilted jersey. And so one of the interesting things is in my studio, as far as I want to be away from painting, I still love the aesthetics of like painters. Mm -hmm. And especially like Sam Gilliam, you know, he would just oh have like God. drenched in paint. And I think that's like one of the coolest things. And so one of the things I do in my studio is like when I'm working, all the scraps are just on the floor. Like it's mm -hmm. just, they're all on the floor. And I've always wondered what to do with those scraps. Mm -hmm. And I was reading Joseph Boys, who's this amazing German artist, and he said one of his criticisms about the art from America is like, we have like too much, like we have all the resources. And he's mm -hmm. like, you should have so much less. And I was constantly thinking about what to do with these scraps. And so I started putting them on the jersey, just like putting them around, and it started making these really cool things. And it almost looked like a ghillie suit, which is like this camouflage. Mm -hmm. And so I started thinking about this is going to get into a rant. I don't know if you wanted that. But um, it started getting into the space of, like, thinking about, like, athletes and artists that, mm -hmm. like, so often the work that athletes and artists do is, like, never seen but, like, mm -hmm. can be highly criticized. You know, because when you have those moments of a show, of a game, you know, like, really, I think we do a poor job of, like, celebrating them because, you know, everybody – like nobody really wants to see a winner that often, you know, like look at mm -hmm. Golden State, everybody's like, ah, they won again, you know, like nobody <laughs> wants to see them win again. But then you're like, but when they lose, everybody's so fast to be like, yeah, you lost, you know? And, but like, I think I would, so as I'm working on these pieces, I noticed that like the more we work on our crafts, the less people can criticize. And like, as I was building these layers on the jersey, it's like you give yourself these like body armor. And it was so funny. I had this fabric from my aunt, and I just had all these scraps of it. Mm -hmm. And I just started putting them on, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. Because actually, the jersey itself is actually Dennis Rodman. So that was the initial, and I was like, oh, his hair, he was always changing. He was like, he was just such a colorful character. Mm -hmm. Started putting them on and on and on and on. And then after I would put it up, and it was just like hanging, 
I was like, oh my God, this just reminds me of Sam <laughs> Gilliam. Yeah. So it actually had nothing to do with his passing, which so was... the fabric was just like that. The fabric was just like that. And it was so interesting that like, I was like, this is, this is like my ode to uh-huh. Sam. And literally, yeah. as I finished it, like a week later, he passed. And I was like, yeah, wow, that is crazy. And I was like, I got to show this. Like, so, so, yeah. So. Cool. Anybody? Yeah. Kyle? Me? I, I don't know if I have one. I have a thought, but you oh, go. She, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> um, I, I was just going to ask for, for Mary. Um, you were talking about uh, your past and present being kind of coming together in your work. And I, I, was, I was curious about these ideas of time, because I do see that where they seem kind of like frozen in time, mm-hmm. a lot of these pieces, and sort of... Um, I guess a little bit more about your process for these. Are you working from memory? Do you have images that you're triggering these with? And how does that relate? Because I think memory and time is very linked. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, y- you know, like, uh, oftentimes it's an image from my past that I remember that, that really, um, a place that I really miss, or you know, that one in the corner was my my great aunts in Ortonville, Minnesota, that lived in, into their hundreds, and they all lived together after their husbands died, and they had a little cottage, and and there was like a, we would go down there t- by the lake to eat and stuff, but um, it was like this back room that you weren't allowed to. Go <laughs> and it was like it had like little lipsticks and like little like uh, Avon powder, you know, <laughs> like a, so um, it was always sort of like, but uh, and it just made um, it's sort of sad. I really miss them a lot. But um, other ones are like, well, this one back here, as I said, is uh, you know memories of taking my daughter to the town pool when she was a baby and just. Um, how things like that, you, you, they go by and you never realize it's the last time. Like I think, like what was the last time that we did that and we didn't know it was gonna be the last time. So that, that's like a, a theme for me. And these were, the big ones are just really like in the middle of the COVID, like you are not going anywhere or you will die. Mm-hmm. It was just like, all right, well I gotta do my house. You know, like, I'm just going to look around and, like, okay, here's the coffee table and here's the, you know, like, um, so, um, and that was also right after my mother passed away and I had her orchid, which I took, which suddenly bloomed, which, you know, I lived, like, I never had orchids before, so that, it's, yeah, so, um, that was, they, they, they all, you know, like I said, like, I only do um, pieces that mean a lot to me. Like I, I can't, like just, which makes it kind of hard, but <laughs> but worthy, <laughs> worthwhile, you know. I have a question. No, I, I, have a, I have a question. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous. Uh, it's a question to everyone, at least on two. So a lot of, I feel like all of your works, even uh, I know through Instagram, and so many of you do a lot of outreach and have this Instagram community. And so to me, it's been really interesting to come into space and see works that I've, I'm sort of very familiar with, uh, but to see them IRL, like you said. And for works that are uh, needle-based, that have so, all the works has like a lot of details in it, uh, I wonder how everybody uh, on, on the panel um, kind of thinks about that. How do we, what work do we end up making work that looks good on Instagram? Is, are there some things that are more, what's effective? So just how do you kind of all navigate that relationship with um, making very physical mm. work with having them be internet based in some ways? That's a great question. Um, I'll start with it. Um, so it's so fascinating. I always, to your point, I always thought the best art is something that when you see it in person, obviously it's like takes your breath away, but then also reproduces well because most people, like most people are never going to see your work in person, which is like a hard reality that like every artist has to face. And we have been fortunate to be able to uh, disseminate our art so much 
to a, such a greater audience because of the internet. And so I always think uh, about the work in a place of like, how does it look? Because like, I think Tom Sachs is a great artist who talks about the act of like the processes. He's like coming up with the idea, making it, and then showing it. And showing it isn't always in galleries, in museums, because like, yes, we're very fortunate to be shown in galleries, but most people are going to see it online. And so then the process, is, the next step of it is how to take photos of it, like how to make it look the best online. And I think that is a very, that's like a, a whole nother art form that I mean, I outsource, but like a lot of people like don't. And I think that to answer your question is like, that is a big part of the process now. It's just like how to put it online and how to try and the best way to get your idea across mm -hmm. in whatever 120 characters or whatever. So. Yeah. There's someone with attention. Somebody else better. Yeah. Talk. I, <laughs> I, I think. I mean, I think marketing, social media is about so, is about marketing for me and about people reaching. Just like, so trying. I mean, I think it, people are surprised that I I really don't love social media, but I see it as part of my job of sustaining a full-time living, being an artist. So I give myself that challenge. You know, I'd love to like be in a closet embroidering or making jewelry all day. That I would love that, but I can't live that way and make a living. So instead of working for the man, I do put things on social media and try to sell them. <laughs> um, but you have to keep up with trends of social media, right? Like videos or whatever it is, time lapse, whatever is the algorithms are wanting in the moment. And it is, I just see it as part of my job. It's something I try not to spend too much time on. Like, um, but yeah, like presenting these um, online is very challenging. It's a horizontal line, which is not your phone. Your phone is a vertical box. Um, so the best way I thought to do it is to do like these flashing images of like red because the one by four actually is the size of a phone that um, so I probably think about this way too much <laughs> but uh, to so I didn't think about it to make the work but after the work's been made I have to think about how to present it to the world that won't see it up close um, I mean, I hope always the, cl the work in person is better than what you see online, right? Flashing images of colors, like no one is gonna like dive into that too much. Like a lot of, I remember one time, someone actually bought a piece of mine at a fair and they thought it was like a drawing on the pieces. So that was like a funny conversation of being like, no, this is all stitched. Like, I guess that would lead me to just be talking about people's attention span. Like on social media, a lot of times it, you know, in my head is like 20 seconds, six seconds, under a minute, you know, I don't know. So all those, obviously I think about it a lot. I try to gain followers because it means more people to see my work, more collectors. They're not always like super high price people that will buy the biggest piece, but it does lead to that sometimes. And I don't know, like the world's your oyster kind of attitude. I try to keep positive, but... It's great, yeah, it's a crazy world out there. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's allowed me to, to not have a work for a jeweler five days a week. <laughs> um, does anybody else? Well, Mary's work is very tactile. It, it no, uh, it's very different look seeing your work totally. than in online. So how yeah. do you, how do you uh, navigate that? How do you? Um, I, I, I don't do any of that. I I, um, I really like Instagram because I have connected with people that like I never would have met over the world. You know, textiles are over the world, and whether it's weaving or knitting or you know, like you you see like any TV show based in Norway, they have rugs on the walls, like textiles. You know, antique textiles. You know. Um, you watch, you know, My Fair Lady, they have baskets. Like, that is all fiber art. And, and people have been making fiber art for 30,000 years. So, like, it's part of our, like, DNA. So, so anyway, back to Instagram. 
Um, <laughs> I, I really like Instagram. I, I have learned, I don't have an art background. I was a dancer and then I worked at Vanity Fair and GQ and lived in the city and, and I just ended up doing this after I had my daughter because I finally had time to not work, <laughs> you know. And, um, you know, it's, it's um, for, for me, like, to just make those connections um, so easily through this app, it's much easier than by in person, which is what was sort of happening when I lived in New York. You know, you had to go to the openings and schmooze, which I hate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, Instagram has been really cool. And it's also really cool to see what people are making now. Like, mm -hmm. I, all the artists that I know, like in Brooklyn and Queens and wherever, Canada, you're seeing what they're doing in their studio right now, which you are not going to see by, like, going to galleries and having it filtered out through the gallery and through the museum and through the money and all of that. So, like, Instagram is, like, the great equalizer. And plus, like, I have to say, like, last night, three people that I... I, I follow on Instagram, came to the opening that I've never met, and they were great. They were, like, really nice. Their, their, you know, their work is wonderful. Yeah, and, like, the fact that I like their work on Instagram and they like my work on Instagram means that there's, like, a connection. So really, you know, that's what I use Instagram for. I don't, I, I don't, I sometimes get a request to, to sell something, and I have a few um, collectors that, that have gone through Instagram, but... That's not why I'm there. So uh, are we the three people that you were talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Also, I would like to say I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Instagram because um, right. I got a late night DM I from you. late night DM from my son, which I was like, this is a little too yeah. late to be DMing me. But uh, it, yeah. I didn't reply. You know, you know, I did. I did not reply. So Cecilia was like, "Who's this my son?" I was like, "Yo, I, I don't know, man. Like, I don't, I don't know, man." So, but. Yeah, I can kick it off just by a street. No, but um, <laughs> just oh, sorry, no. Um, uh, just I had very. I, my dad was a lawyer and had. My mom worked for AT and T, like answering phones long ago, and just stayed with that company her whole life. Um, but yeah, I love how supportive they are, and that's the cool part about it. I think it's the support system. But yeah, that's a that's a straight note for me. I mean, not even going to art museums or anything very much. Just, but I've always loved making things since I was young, and they're so supportive. So they didn't know where it was gonna go, but they're like trusting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I grew up with art around me. That I just didn't realize it was art, and it's a crazy, crazy thing. My mom, uh, who would have been here but is uh, recovering from a knee surgery, uh, made amazing quilts that I could never do. And it was always, it was funny because I always thought of them as a, the utilitarian thing. And But there were quilts that were on the couch that you used to snuggle up with and there were quilts on the wall that you never touched. And I was like, and it only till after I grew up and actually learned something, I noticed that I was like, that's amazing. And going off to Stacey, what she was saying is, um, yeah, the community, it was like, that was the biggest thing that mattered to me, because as a lot of people here, I know, and they were all supportive, and wonderful woman who asked the question, their heart, uh, art, art house, their house was just full of art, like, it was always surrounded me, but I never actually participated until, like, later, so that is very interesting. Um, I, yes, I, I grew up, um, my mom was a dancer, and my dad was... Uh, a poet, so uh, there were not painters, but the house was always full of art, and even my grandparents. And uh, my grandparents had like replicas of like a Degas painting. And so I think what's amazing, and I, I wonder, uh, you know, we have kids, but I, I do wonder if um, kids still spend so much time staring at art that hangs at their house. Because, uh, you know, I remember every single painting that was in my parents' house or my grandparents or probably every adult space that I was at because I didn't have 
a lot of other distractions and I wasn't a reader, I was a looker. Um, so I spent time vi like looking at the visual world. And uh, I grew up in Israel, so obviously there were museums, but there were not that many um, historic works that was available for me to see in person. So my dad had this great library and he had this collection of small artist books. So it was about the size of, you know, all the all the masters and all these things. And from the youngest age my favorite thing to do in the world was to look at art books. So um, so I would say yes and no. My parents uh, both had other careers and my mother had been deciding if she wanted to be a professional harpist or to go into psychology, which she ended up doing. And so she kind of had stopped playing harp, but we did have harps in our house. Uh, my father um, was a physicist, but he also painted and, and made other visual art. And I do remember one, to Tali's point about looking at art growing up, so we had one of his paintings above our, of above our fireplace, um, which was about um, sort of uh, some of the rioting and integration in, in the 1960s where my parents had been pretty active. And the, that was important, obviously, um, for a lot of the family philosophy and things like that, their, their work in that field, my parents, but also just to have that, uh, that image of, of that painting. No, I did not have art, um, visual art. In my, my brother was an art, was the artist mm -hmm. of my family, but um, we had a lot of music. We all like played piano. My mother was an organist at the church, and um, um, I became a dancer. And so I was sort of circling the art world. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Right. yeah, and we, you know, we did go to museums in New York, and we. We, but more often we went to like Riverside Church uh, or St. Thomas, like for the even song, so the music um, aspect. More. Okay. Do we have any more questions? I would like to take questions for you. For me? Oh my goodness. I have a, my life is uh, very different from all of you. I'm an immigrant um, from. <laughs> Thank you. No, <laughs> I was never exposed to art as a, uh, as a child. So um, I grew up, I was born in a country called Malaysia. So uh, it's in Southeast Asia, next to Thailand. Because I have to tell people about that because people don't know Malaysia. Oh, so you know. <laughs> you are art, you know, you're an outlier. <laughs> so I, I grew up in Malaysia, my um, second generation um, um, immigrant. Um, so my father was born in Malaysia as well. Um, but we, uh, my grandfather uh, arrived in Malaysia as a refugee. So we were poor. So I grew up in a poor kind of uh, out, in, out, in the outskirts of Kuala Lumpur, which is the capital city of Malaysia. So there was no money and no, you know. I, I, had, to, I had to help um, my mother uh, care for my three younger sisters when I was nine years old. I cooked lunch and dinner. Yeah, you have to learn how to wash clothes. Um, with your hands. <laughs> yes, I, we never had a washing machine until I was an adult. Yeah, that's my reality. So, you know, as a person from poverty to here. So I was lucky, you know, when, um, because Malaysia, we spoke, uh, we had to learn English at school. So because of my English command, I was able to get a job in tech. So I was a, te a tech sales, sales person as a, when I finished uh, high school. So that's how I got into you know, the corporate world and all that, and then uh, met someone who, um, yeah, then yeah, got married and moved to Australia. Yes, so I lived there for 15 years, and I actually acquired my degree there, my, my art, history, art history degree there. So look, my, my, you can tell my accent is really all over the place. You know, there's a bit of a British and faux British, I would say, because it was colonial, you know, and then uh, the, a bit of Aussie, you know, Australia, you, you, <laughs> and, and a bit of Americans, because sometimes I do like to tr uh, pronounce the R for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Recent, recently, I learned to say Tesla. What? Tesla. Tesla. Yeah, Tesla. Oh, Tesla. Uh, Tesla with the R. 
That is a Boston thing, yes. 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 I'm learning about Philly and yeah as well. So um, yeah, well, that's my background. So, but I. It's a yeah. We that means we can do what we you know if you want it. Yes, I believe in that. Thank you for saying that. Yes. <laughs> but I think a lot of people started businesses uh, mm -hmm. during COVID too. I think uh, during COVID, well, there was a huge uh, explosion of like, you know, new things and pivoting and all that. Yeah. Um, so it is like, you know, I always believe that there, when there's a ch there are challenging times, mm -hmm. there's always opportunities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then you kind of capitalize on that and start something right yeah so you see the opportunity and do it so yeah yeah and that's how like uh, focusing on for me on social media and like came yeah, about is, yeah. because we I was doing 12 fairs a year at one point oh. and then all different kinds of fairs but um, yeah with COVID everything shut down so it's like a turn to figuring out okay well there are no jobs but I don't want to go back to any kind of job yeah. so then you pivot and you pivot, pivot right pivot, yeah, pivot, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Make it so work. It's like, how hungry are you? You know. How hungry are you? That's it. How how much do you want it? Yeah. 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 Do you have a question, Loam? We have Loam. Uh, how old are you? I'm nine. You're nine. Are you an artist? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um. Well, when you make your art. When you make your art, do you get ideas from where, from like what's around you, or really just everything else? Like, what's that? For me, is it I think me? It's, I think it's is a question for me? <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. Oh, okay. Is someone who lives with me and uh, sometimes advises me. Um, well, I guess I can talk about one piece in particular, which is the one over there. That's the one you were thinking about. Yes. The inspiration is, right. So I will talk about that one specifically because this is, this is uh, the only COVID era uh, piece in this, the one all the way on the right there. And so this was early day of COVID, like April 2020-ish when I started it. And what we were doing, Kyle was mentioning, we have this camera that a friend built for us. And so for about a, for the month of April, every day as a family with different members of the family, we'd go out and we'd film things. And we made a piece, it was a commission by Issue Project Room in New York, and there's a, a video um, about that. And so one of the days we went out in the marsh and I, we filmed with Loam and his sister Rama, who's in it. Is that what you were thinking about? And then another day, we filmed his sister Delisa making um, homemade uh, pasta. Mm -hmm. And so those are those hands there. So, um, and then there was a lot about, you know, what, like, I mean, Mary was talking about being at the home. So for us who were at the home when there are three children, and so in that particular piece, it is inspired by our children. Oh, okay. That is a great question. Um, I think, uh, man, this is it's like an SAT question. You get, you know, it's like, um, I think it's I think it it's really the world around me, you know, and how as I said earlier, it's like the scale of how I want to make it and then materializing it. Um, and I think it's one of those things where it's like the world is around you and within you. So take that for whatever it is, and <laughs> just tell tell the kids when you when go back to school, you like Michael C. Thorpe taught me that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I I uh, I do both, you know, memories from childhood or, you know, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> I want a dog. Um, I guess I'm a little different in that I I do a lot of my work based in series or collections, which I'm sure you guys do too. But a lot of times riffing on a specific series, the costume, the costume party, Halloween costume party, it was, 
is definitely a specific like train of thought for that work but there's other trains of thought that I kind of go in and out of um, but sometimes you know sometimes I think of a costume I wore but it's not like the best costume so I won't do that one so not a lot of memories actually <laughs> Okay, I think we only have like five minutes left. So, uh, any last questions? If not, we're going to wrap up. So, one word answer. Half question for Stacy. <laughs> Are your pieces one of a kind? Yeah, definitely. Jessica has brought a coin piece uh, that she oh. bought like in 2020. Oh. So sweet. From the cycle. Was it? <laughs> yes, it's all uh, cut coins, women that were cut from coins. Oh, Lord have mercy. Show everyone. Show everyone. It's, it's all women that were cut from coins. It's like a collection of women. But I, so they're cut with a jeweler's saw. And that comes from my jewelry training. Um, but yeah, you're so sweet, Jessica. It's you to bring that. I told her she's going to make me blush on bringing this. <laughs> but I do all kinds of work. But thank you. You're so sweet. But yeah, I did a uh, show at the Cyclorama. And were you at the Cyclorama or the Heinz? Uh, Seaport. Oh, at the craft. The, okay, yeah. There was Society of Contemporary Craft was at the Seaport at one time. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of craft shows at one time just starting out representing myself as an artist. Um, but yeah, I made a, a, I still make big coin pieces. Like, um, but that is a sweet, like, smaller. So that piece is more of a limited edition. But these embroideries are one of a kind. And I think the work is definitely, like, getting to the one of a kind. But when I'm making jewelry, it's more of, like, small, yeah, limited edition pieces. Well, I think it's pieces. I have a oh. wall in my hallway uh, that have all female artists. Mm -hmm. oh, so I love that. All female coins. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, and a lot of coins are so great. A lot of them are em uh, symbolic women, not necessarily actual women, but you know, the Lady Liberty is like a phantom, mm -hmm. right? So it's mm -hmm. artist depictions of what she looked like, and that's true in Italy and many European coins too. But yeah, it's very cool. Thank you so much for bringing it. You're so sweet. <laughs> well, I do have a last question. I think we did not really address this. Um, this is a fiber and textile art show. So you know how the um, uh, one of the reasons I really want to do this uh, is to kind of um, highlight this medium. Mm. I think it's no longer a craft. What well, do you think and how do you like? I mean, one question for you. Yeah. We, uh, I see a lot of contemporary art too and it, fiber is, it seems very, mm. like popular is not the right word, but you, like it's, it's definitely like many artists who weren't doing fiber are doing fiber at this moment. So I would throw it back to you and say, like, what do you think about curating a fiber show, mm -hmm. or why did you, or yeah, did that's I not answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> you answer a question with a question. Yes, yes. yes. Um, actually, actually, what I feel, uh, um, what I have experienced and observed, I mean, uh, before this gallery, I used to own a co-own a, a ceramics gallery. Mm. You know, it's craft. Yeah. Right? Ceramics oh. also is experiencing the same thing. Like artists who did not do uh, clay, mm -hmm. they're now doing right, clay. Right, right, sure. And then when they do it, they command lots and lots of money. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, it's the same, right? What mm -hmm. you just said, mentioned as well. I like, have a lot of thoughts on it, but you guys do. You have, have a lot of. <laughs> there's more thoughts. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say, you know, maybe it's kind of trending, but um, I think that, especially right now, there's been such a time of distancing and separation from people and materials and things like that, that there are plenty of reasons for a resurgence of interest in the physical materials and, and you know, ceramic or textile. These are, these are very visceral materials where the body can really interact in a physical way. And this kind of relates to the idea that was discussed before about, you know, things being on Instagram or other social media being very distinct from from a physical experience, but these are things that even if you're not actually touching them, you have a very different physical experience with these materials. And I think you can maybe talk about craft too. So is it uh, well, I, I yeah, yeah, I craft, yeah, label. well, I guess I I guess I don't know if I don't know if I'm a great person to answer that question because it feels like there is. Um, 
we can kind of quickly fall into uh, this false hierarchy between art and craft. And so I, this is something I struggle myself in kind of explaining myself out of it because I don't, I don't have that hist- articulated story. Like I'm not an art historian or a critic, but there is a kind of, um, you know, if we look at history and artists who were, uh, you know, like at the Bauhaus school where women couldn't go, so the women had their own program, which they could do weaving and ceramics. So even though we don't intend to make these distinctions, we're often talking about, um, you know, women's work, queer folks, people of color who are kind of get already kind of pushed into this kind of group. And historically, it has been um, kind of kind of forcibly separated from the art world. So not only is it, um, you know, these different practices are now part of the art world, but, but really we should kind of maybe eliminate the, these um, kind of separations altogether, um, generally. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> in, in some ways, like, like the stitching, I, I love like the creepy ones because it's like women's work coming to this very masculine identity. And so I think sometimes you can like push it to your advantage if you, if you can work it right. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to say one. One more thing about oh, it, yeah, though, yeah. before that whole thing yeah, came up, it was about uh, also, uh, you know, Kyle was kind of saying, it, 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 you know, this reaction to, um, you know, our digital selves. Uh, also, you know, in some so many cases, this is, we experienced it in like, uh, you know, in the consumer's landscape as well, kind of reaction against fast fashion and the return to, you know, the homemade, the cottage industries, appreciating uniqueness and handmade things where locally sourced and we want all these connections. So I, I see all these things and as um, kind of one, one processes. And I really do think in, in so many ways, the art world is transforming right now through all these different forces of COVID and the internet and what you're talking about, like who, who sees it, who buys it. Um, and so we, it's a great chance not to start new things, but to talk about things differently too. I mean, sure. Uh, I mean, uh, the. I think. I mean, it's just funny to me. I think everybody uses words to just like divide and conquer people, and I think that's always what I thought about um, uh, museum. I mean, the, just the way museums are structured is uh, hilarious to me. And I think um, <laughs> we, uh, me, and Lysan and our uh, partner in crime, Mark Brock, um, gotta give him always gotta give him some love and. Um, Give it up for Mark Brock. Um, uh, beautiful, beautiful. Um, and uh, we actually went to Alabama recently, and it was actually, uh, we went to the Birmingham Museum of Art, and it was actually the first museum I felt that actually broke down a lot of those barriers as art is art. And I think one, um, I, I was reading uh, another German cat whose name is Michael Kuber, and he said, calling myself an artist is enough. And I thought that was like so powerful. And I think uh, no matter what you do as an artist, uh, whatever you make, however you make it, is art. And I think that everybody loves just like to throw around words to make it easier for them to digest it. But I think we are capable to, of to digesting art as it is. So. Yeah, there's so many shows, like craft shows I used to do where you have to jury into categories. So jewelry, fibers, whatever it is. And, it, and people ask me all the time, because I have a jewelry background, like, well, should I call you a jeweler, a metalsmith, uh, an embroiderer, or, and I was like, artist, just use the word artist. But I have one show that I really love that I still do, the Philly Museum show. It's a craft show at, um, in Philadelphia downtown at the convention center, but I juried into three categories because I was just trying to be an asshole. <laughs> and then I got into all three, and so my name's like listed like in each category. <laughs> pretty funny yeah. but it is funny that you know and you're kind of like subversive in a way that you're like you kind of like uh here take you know like yeah you gotta it's like, like a f you f you yeah, yeah f you kind of gesture by yeah. getting into every category yeah that's right yeah yeah that's right yeah mary any um thoughts <laughs> okay <laughs> good so no categories we are all artists yeah. yes yeah. 
yeah, we are, and we are making art. <laughs> yes, we. <we're, laughs> well, thank you so much. I think uh, we have to wrap up. Thank you so much for attending and uh, and and listening. Yeah.